Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We will be reading to you a story from about Don Bosco, a story about Don Bosco. Stories of Don Bosco by Peter Lapley. The last one that we read was about the housekeeper that died. Now we're going to read another one called The Tables Turned, page 69. The Tables Turned. Several priest friends at this time came to visit Don Bosco. Unimpressed by the crude setup of his oratory, they pleaded with him to give up working with poor boys. It was useless trying to do anything for them, they warned. Besides, several good positions in the city were his for the asking. Don Bosco listened in a distracted sort of way. He began to relate what he thought the future held for his work with boys. Spreading out his arms, he enthusiastically traced the design of a great church, large school buildings, well-equipped workshops, spacious playgrounds. He also talked of hundreds of helpers. My son, what I'd like to tell you is that I would have loved to have sent you to a school by Don Bosco's type of organization. They are called the Salesians. However, they have stopped doing the work that Don Bosco started out to do. I believe that now they teach the rich children. So what I want you to do is to open up an orphanage and teach the art of mechanics, plumbing, electricity, everything that Booker T. Washington talks about, cooking, sewing, those things. But it's got to be greater than sewing because there was a documentary about a place and perhaps it was called USA China. They named the city Made in USA without periods, meaning that it was a fake city or a city that was named to fool everyone that it was made in the United States. And when the sewing companies left, the women there became prostitutes because there was no other business. So this tells me that the women need to learn a skill besides sewing. And in Honduras and in other countries, they have maquilas or sewing companies that make the shirts for big companies like Walmart or something else. And these companies, they decide to leave a country and go to another country, which is great for the other country. But then when they leave Honduras, then all the women don't have work anymore. There must be a greater skill than sewing. It's a good start. Cooking, sewing, it's a good start. But mechanics, fixing lawnmowers and cars and tractors, that's what your school must, if you are willing to accept this challenge, that's what your school must teach computer repair also. He also talked about having hundreds of helpers and workshops, playgrounds, large school buildings. His friends stared at each other. Completely off his head was their conclusion. He has overworked himself. 
After talking it over with others, they decided that the only way to help him would be to bring him to the asylum for a complete checkup and cure. The next step was to get him to the asylum. People like that develop great strength, they were warned. And Don Bosco, even when sane, is as strong as a bull. Use a little strategy. I can see. I know that. It's fine. Okay. Use a little strategy was the advice they <laughs> told each other. This is before they invented the shock thing to capture people or mace and things like that. Well, they didn't. No, they just touch you and it's electric. It's a stun gun. Oh, Taser. Yeah. A few days later, the two priests chosen to carry out the mission called on Don Bosco in a carriage. After a pleasant conversation, one of them casually suggested, How about a run in the country? The change of air will do you good. We have a carriage outside. A carriage, exclaimed Don Bosco. A drive in the country. Well, why not? I suppose it will do me good. Meanwhile, he had been piecing together the visits, the odd conduct, smiles and innuendos, and had drawn his own conclusions. So he's, he's very wise. He understands what Max disrespectful son what's going on you're touching the phone man put the phone outside of the center all right now listen to the story a carriage well why not he had drawn his conclusions happy that their little scheme was working out so well the two clerics led him to the carriage once they had him in the carriage, they intended to lock the door and the coachman, already forewarned, would make a non-stop dash for the asylum. Politely, they invited Don Bosco to get in before them. Don Bosco opened the carriage door, graciously stepped aside, and motioned them to enter first. I think I still know my manners, he murmured. The two men realized that they could not decline without arousing suspicion and assumed he would follow them and thus be safe for the rest of the journey. They climbed into the carriage. Once they were inside, however, Don Bosco slammed the door shut and stepped clear. Quick, he shouted to the driver, to the asylum. Don't stop till you get there. You have two dangerous characters locked inside. The driver's orders had been clear. Once the carriage door was closed, he was to dash off no matter who objected. He whipped up his horse and bolted in the direction of the asylum. At the asylum, a group of muscular attendants who had been warned to expect trouble, were standing by. When the carriage drew to a stop, to their surprise, they found they had to take care of not one madman, but two. These two protested so vigorously that the attendants had their work cut out getting them inside. Since it was lunchtime and the asylum officials were out, the two men had to stay there until the chaplain of the hospital came to identify them. The story soon made the rounds of the city, and while it raised a laugh, at the same time it convinced people that Don Bosco despite his dreams, was quite sane. All right.
right, so now we know about Don Bosco having dreams. We know about Joseph being thrown in prison in the Bible because of his dreams and telling. The, the problem is that he told about his dreams. You see? So don't tell your dreams to people. And don't tell your problems to people. Unless they can help you. Like I called the lady to loan me a lawnmower. And she said yes. Yeah. Well, our lawnmower didn't start today. The belt was loose. And the mechanic, my friend David, said that it's supposed to be a V. A V shape. Where the belt goes around and it had been worn already so it was already shaped like a, like a U instead of the V so he said A you get a smaller belt or B you buy the part so I told him buy the part since we have the money for it I think we have the God bless you and those that surround you. Get some rest. Take care of the body that God is loaning you. Go do a good deed. Go help somebody.